And good morning and welcome to Coach's Corner. Live from McDonald's on Madison's Hilltop, I'm Tim Torrance. We do it every Saturday from the McDonald's across from the Madison High School. We're going to talk KDH, your athletic trainers. Got a whole host of people here this morning. We're going to talk to them. Dave Pappenheim in. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good morning. Fine. Uh, I guess the announcement kind of lightened your guys' load a little bit. Uh, yeah, we kind of thought it was going to happen, but weeks of no sports is a long time, especially when you're used to working as many hours and events as we usually do. Even though this is a slow time, to not have any work to do after 3 o'clock is going to be strange, I think. For the, st for the student athlete, how does an announcement like this, as far as athletic training goes, or athletes in general, how does that affect them, or what, what effect will it have on them? Well, I hope all the people that are hurt, mm -hmm. when we come back in a few weeks, feel fine with all the rest they get. Sure. And if any of them are listening, they should be doing their exercises, because mm -hmm. I don't want them to come back to, my back still hurts. <laughs> you know, they have weeks to get better yeah. with no stress on their bodies from practice and games. So. When, you have, when you have somebody that's hurt, too, Dave, and, and you guys can do their, their rehab and all that, but a lot of it falls into the hands of the student athlete to, to whatever you know exercises they're supposed to do at home to make sure that gets taken care of. Right, that's how I find help every year. I have uh, chronically injured athletes, they're all sitting here today, <laughs> that <laughs> are hurt so often and can't compete, I talk them into helping me out instead of continually doing their sport and being hurt all the mm -hmm. time. So yeah, we have plenty of hurt kids at Madison. We're, we're on a record pace this year. Uh, typically, I see about 1,500 injuries per year, and this is season 23 for me. And in the last uh, two years ago, it ramped up to like 2,500 injuries. And last year it was 2,800 injuries, and this year it's going to be over 3,000. Any rhyme or reason? I was waiting for the question. <laughs> my, my answer is... They do too much, and I'm going to give you my, my one example I'm going to use when we have our coaches meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, I had an athlete over the summer said she went to her travel softball practice, which is probably, what, two and a half hours. Right. Then she went to her open gym basketball, probably an hour and a half. Then she went to her open gym volleyball, probably an hour and a half. And then she went and did a CrossFit workout, which was probably an hour. So she did maybe seven hours of workout in one day. And I, you know, all the coaches are all tougher than we, we are now because they all say, oh, I used to do that all the time. But I guarantee you no coaches did seven hours of exercise in one day and c could recover from that because the kids don't get enough sleep and they don't get enough good nutrition. When you, when you have a situation like that, uh, best advice? One sport at a time. Mm -hmm. I, 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 we're going to have to have, do a better job at the school of communicating. When, when it's football season, you do football workouts. You don't have to do basketball. When it's basketball season, you don't have to do baseball, softball. I'm not picking any sports. Sure. Every sport is overlapping so much, they all kind of expect their kids to show up and do shoot around or throw or whatever when they're still in a current sport. It, it's, it's become a 12-month-a-year a uh, process for sport. And as you mentioned, it, that's hard for a kid to, to divide enough time to find the right time to get everything done correctly. And if you, if you try to stuff all that into one day or uh, two or three things in a season, it kind of takes away from the, from, the, from the goal, and that's making yourself better. Right, because the one thing, and Shay and I were talking about this the other day, uh, one workout can't make an ath athlete, but it can break an athlete. So when you do have all those heavy workouts, if they don't get enough recovery, and I think that's a big part of it, that's what's getting them hurt. It's not the hard workout they had on Monday. It's that they did it Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, and they had no rest in between. For kids that, that choose to do multiple sports, and again, you said one sport at a time, that's, that's the best way to, to approach it. Do coaches understand that? Doubtful, otherwise it wouldn't keep happening. And right. I did it to my own son. Right. He, he played, was running high school track, and I had him doing travel soccer. That, that terrible dad. And he got hurt, and he couldn't do either one. Right. So I learned my own lesson, and I thought he could handle both those sports, but he still wasn't physically mature enough to do it, especially when you're a freshman or sophomore. Their bodies are still growing. Uh, they have, you know, open growth plates, weaker muscles and everything else, and they can't handle the same stress that a junior or senior athlete can handle. Typically when you're on the program, we always seem to, to focus on concussions and knee injuries. What are you seeing this year in particular? Is there, is there one thing running more than something else? Back pain. Mm -hmm. We had fewer concussions in football, which is a miracle since we had such a low number on, as, of, as far as the roster goes. Um, 
we did have seven, or am I thinking of last year? Seven serious knee injuries this year? Maybe that's last year. I'm getting them all mixed up. <laughs> but I know right now back pain's been the big thing, mm -hmm. and I attribute that to all their extra work, too many workouts, morning workouts, after school workouts, and lifting weights and everything else. Even the kid in the, in the best health, best shape, best physique, et cetera, et cetera, has this problem. Our two best football players probably attributed to seven of our 64 injuries on the football team mm -hmm. because they played both ways. They never came off the field. They had twice as many impacts. And even though they're superstars, mm -hmm. they were hurt. And my injuries count if you miss a practice, a game, or limited in a practice, that's an injury. So like I said, we're going to have over 3,000 of those this year in a school that probably only has a couple hundred athletes. Yeah. 23rd year, you said? 23rd season, yep. Why? <laughs> Uh, I like it, and they haven't found a way to get rid of me yet. It, it might happen one day with all the changes that go on in, in, with things, but uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. I always thought when my kids did high school sports, I would uh, not do all that game coverage. Well, now they're done, so I right. don't have anything else to do. I'll just come here and watch these guys. Busiest season for you? Uh, football season yeah. or in the fall. In the fall. It, it, too many contact sports with boys and girls soccer, right. football, and then when you throw in uh, – Cross country, there's a lot of overuse injuries with that too. Well, and you you talked about, and people kind of imagine that football would be your your biggest injury sport because of the contact. Is that true? Oh yeah, yeah. it's it's by far always had the most injuries. Um, it goes in spurts with, with sometimes it's girls soccer, sometimes it's boys soccer. Uh, this year, I think for girls basketball, we had zero injuries compared to last year when half the team was hurt. Right. This year, it's been boys basketball. So it just depends. Every year kind of fluctuates, but there's always tons of injuries with football, especially when we've been undersized and undermanned compared to our competition. Have you seen the, and you mentioned concussions, but have you seen the, the amount of concussions decrease overall as, as, as a society, as a school, per se? No, it's probably gone up only because of awareness. We probably have the same amount. It's just that people are more aware of what the symptoms are and what to look for. Right. Parents are more concerned. So before they'd be, ah, oh, he's all right, you know, but now they're like, oh, I think he needs to sit out. Uh, a couple years ago was our worst year ever. We had a huge number of concussions, 32, I think, for all sports for a school year. Right. Uh, this year we're probably in, in the teens, so about half of what that was a few years ago on a bad season. Is that is that because of, of awareness per se? Take give or take. If you're talking about you know concussions and, and people are aware, so maybe you have more. But uh, the prevention, I guess, maybe is where I should go with it. I think it's luck. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's it's luck. You know, they can do neck strengthening, mm -hmm. uh, which our football players do that anyway. Uh, when you see girl basketball players get them, it's from taking a charge and her head thumps off the floor. Right. It doesn't happen to boy basketball players because their necks are stronger. They keep their head up. Right. Uh, we didn't have, I don't think, any concussions in girls soccer this year, which is really good because that's like the second number. Uh, to sport for injuries to head injuries after football is girls soccer and we didn't have any so some of that might be how you head the ball or avoiding putting your head on the ball right. and some of it's just luck you didn't go head to head going for a, a free ball or falling on the ground hitting your head or something we're going to bring in shay green good morning shay hi um four years you've been doing this yeah i think so why? i was trying to figure that out why 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 did you get in this this field um, well, when I was, I went to IU, when I first started there, I was going nursing. Um, I started some of the prereqs my freshman year, and I just didn't really know if I wanted to do nursing. Sure. Um, so I looked into some other programs that IU had or offered, because I didn't really know what an athletic trainer was, because I grew up at Switz, we didn't really have a full-time one. Mm -hmm. So I looked into the athletic training program, um, applied for that. And got in and here I am. So it's is it an enjoyable field to be in? It is now. <laughs> the, first, <laughs> the first couple years you're a little nervous because you're on your own. Mm -hmm. You don't really know like is this person hurt? Should I send them you know to the right. doctor? Should I not? But after you get some experience now I'm a little a little more in tune with everything. So Has Dave been a good help? Oh yeah, Dave and Marcy. Yeah? Yeah. Well good. Uh, so you have to make those decisions when you're on your own and then you have to you kind of question yourself whether you've made the right one? Sometimes, yeah. Um, but that's kind of where Dave and Marcy come in. Sometimes we'll come to the rehab center for work and we'll say, hey, I had an athlete this weekend with 
so-and-so symptoms, like do you think I should send them or what do you think is going on with them and usually, you know, they're just a text away and even if I need like a decision right at that moment, right. so they help. Um, you have to work with with coaches on decisions that you make with playing or not playing. Has that been somewhat of a challenge? Not yet. <laughs> so I mostly do all the games at Shaw. Mm -hmm. Most of the coaches are pretty pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had any coach that's really yelled at me yet saying like I shouldn't hold this person out. Right. That hasn't come yet but it probably will at some point. Um, so nothing too bad yet. Yeah. And, and again, this is a field that you really wasn't going to be in originally. So now that you're in it, do you look back and think, I made the right decision? Yeah, I think so. At first I was a little nervous, but now I, because I kind of thought, well, once I start a family, I don't know if I want to do it as much, but now I'm to the point where now that I'm more comfortable, I feel like I could keep doing it. Kind of like Dave said, mm -hmm. he thought he would stop when his kids were in school. Now I feel like, I, I don't know. It's kind of growing on you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now that you've got weeks to, well, I gotta say, do nothing, relax. but you you can relax a little bit. What do you What do you do when you don't have? I mean, are you do you have time off or what do you What do you do? So, um, I'll see patients at the rehab center, mm -hmm. um, but we've been kind of slow there recently with more cancels. I don't know if people are scared to get out right, right. now, um, so it'll be a slower time for us for sure without having games because that kind of adds in some of our hours so right. probably have some more time off really <laughs> and there's nothing Extra wrong time. with that is yeah. there? no that's, no, that's exactly good. right we also have some student athletic trainers in with us this morning dave who you who'd you bring along today well we have abby kelly or abigail is uh she told me when she put it in my phone so i had her phone number <laughs> A Ashlyn White and Megan Eads. Uh, why, why, uh, why are these three athletic trainers? <laughs> well, uh, we're going to start at the end with Megan. Mm -hmm. She is probably, not to pick on her, but probably one of our most injured athletes we've had at Madison <laughs> in the last five, <laughs> ten years. He, she's had a tremendous amount of injuries uh -huh. and illnesses, and we've got to know each other well <laughs> enough that I kind of said, hey, you want to help me out this right. next year? Because she said she wasn't going to play volleyball, so right. she was going to be free in the fall, so I, I got her for that. And then if I worked my way to Ashland, she was wanting, wanting to play soccer, but she also has some chronic joint pain. We don't know what it is, mm -hmm. uh, and she's been hurt a lot. And I, I had to work hard to convince her to do it because she said, no, I'm going to do this, or no, I'm going to do that. Right. And she's been around actually the most now that this whole school year has gone along, and it's been a big help, especially with all the basketball injuries. She's taped lots of uh, ankles this year. Mm -hmm. And then Abby asked me if she could help because uh, she didn't want to run cross country and uh, wanted to spend more time because she wants to do this and for her career in the future. So. Oh, wow. She volunteered. I kind of forced Ashlyn into it, and Megan just kind of floated into it like a lot of the other people did. <laughs> All right. Abby, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Uh, so why do you do this then? Why do you? Um, it started with my knee surgery in 2017, mm -hmm. and so I was around Dave a lot, and I was yeah. at the rehab center a lot. Mm -hmm. And then I was going around cross country, but then I'm also dealing with a lot of back issues, mm -hmm. and so... I didn't want to run anymore, <laughs> so right. I went into Dave and I was like, can I help you during football because I know Brianna did and mm -hmm. Mackenzie, and I thought it would be a good opportunity for me since I do want to go in the physical therapy field and I also want to be a trainer. Has it been beneficial to, to do this now? Yes, I really think so. I think if any kid wanted to do it or even go into this field, it is a great opportunity to get to know everything and be familiar. Most difficult part of being one of these things? <laughs> <laughs> Wrapping people's stinky feet is disgusting. I've heard that uh, that scenario a few times in my house. Yeah, Wrapping stinky feet. <laughs> they're gross. Yeah, they're, they're, gross. <laughs> they're just gross. Uh, but the best part, it's got to be a good part of this or you wouldn't do it. Yeah, um, I think being on the football field every night, we were so close. I did not know anything about football. And anytime something happened, they would be like, no, no, that's not good. Or, oh, yeah, that's good. So I'd be like, when the crowd cheers, I'll cheer. But I think being down there and helping the guys, like I was on the football field every single night or Friday night, probably like 10 times. And right. just knowing being what's going on instead of staying there, I'm like, oh, what to do. But I knew exactly what to do.
been been good. Been good for her, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> and it, it, they don't understand how much I actually appreciate the help. I and mean, I'm sad that I've only had them for one year. Right. And I have to try and find some help for next year, <laughs> especially during football season. We are right. so busy. We set records this year. I keep talking about right. how busy we've been. We were seeing 45 people a day before practice with all fall sports. Just this one guy can't do 40. If I'm really fast, yeah. someone's going to be an hour and a half late to practice. Right. So their little bit of help makes a big difference. Was, was taping ankles a challenge to learn? Yes. Yeah. I came in like two weeks during the summer. We all did, and we'd have to tape his feet first, and then <laughs> his, his stinky feet. Yeah, his smelly feet. And then we all took turns rapping, and he made us get it. My first one was probably four minutes, and we yeah. have to be at least a minute. Yeah. And so it was just really challenging, but it's pretty easy now that you get the hang of it. So you want to be a, a physical therapist, athletic trainer? Yes. Where are you going to school at? Do you know? Uh, UND. All right. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Go ahead and switch spots. Ashley, good morning. Good morning. Uh, why do you do this? Um, like Dave said, he kind of forced me into it. <laughs> he has uh, a habit of that. Yes, 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 he does. Yeah. I've always loved sports. Mm -hmm. um, played volleyball for three and a half years. Mm -hmm. Ended up having to stop due to some knee issues. And so I still wanted to have some part of sports. And so when Dave offered it, I was like, no, no, I'm going to try to do a sport. I'm going to try to do a sport. Right. And then he offered it again. I'm like, no, no, I'm going to do a sport. So eventually he just convinced me into it. And it was a good way for me to still be involved. It, has it been okay? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've learned a lot. Right. And it's cool to be able to help people mm -hmm. and where I needed help. Yeah. So. It's cool Stink, to get back. Stinky feet. Oh, yeah, definitely. It's disgusting. <laughs> but but it's part of the job. Oh, yeah, right? I yeah. guess. And uh, so the first time you wrapped an ankle, how, how disastrous was it? Oh, it was terrible. <laughs> it looked awful. <laughs> I don't. I think I was probably the worst one out of us through at the beginning. It was pretty bad. <laughs> so what are you gonna What are you gonna do after high school? Do you know? Have you made up um, your college plans yet? No. 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 Not at all. Physical therapy in the in the. Uh, I've been interested in athletic training. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to go to school so long. <laughs> so <laughs> that would be great if you could just whiz right through it, you know. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. You don't. You, so you don't really have a, a definite plan after high school mm -mm, yet. Not yet. Not, not yet. But so what do you do in the spring? Um, I don't know yet. Yeah. I mean, I'm working, yeah. so oh, if I'm not helping Dave, right. I'm working. You, you make a pretty good drink. Yes, I do. <laughs> What's it called? A Quinn. A Quinn. That's right. <laughs> All right. Ashlyn, thanks for coming in this morning. Thank you. All right. Switch spots. Megan, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being here this morning. You've been here before, right? Yes. Yeah, you were here for basketball. Talk about uh, why you do this. I mean, other than because you're injured all the time, I guess. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wanted to be a nurse in the sure. beginning. Right. And so after going through a lot of physical therapy, and then when he asked me, I thought more about it. Yeah. So. Yeah, it, and it, it happens. And there are people, and I've, I've been around people a long time, there's people that just have a problem with injuries that can't avoid them. It's nothing they do, they just can't avoid injuries. You have kind of you fall in that, under that umbrella with, I just can't seem to not be injured? Definitely, it's yeah. been like an every year thing. Is it, is it frustrating? Yes. Yeah, but now you're doing this, and, and again, for, for you, why, why, I mean, is it something that, it has been fun for you to do with athletic training? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. I like helping people, so. Oh, are you going to think about doing this after you get out of high school? Yeah. Yeah, really? Got any definite plans yet for? Um, UND for you, physical therapy. Oh, another one for UND. UND must be the spot, I guess. It is. It's where I went to school also. Oh, yeah, that's right. I remember that yeah, conversation. They're in yeah. Indiana State. Yeah, yeah. right. Absolutely. Uh, so what about wrapping ankles, Megan, for you? How, how much fun is that? Um, definitely the stinky feet. Yeah. How was your first wrapping job? Um, it was kind of rough <laughs> and very, it took very long. Yeah. And it's supposed to be, what, a minute? Is that what you said, Dave? Well, I'd, I'd want them to get it under two minutes. Yeah. Two and a half, I think. Uh, I do mine in about a little over a minute, so I don't expect them to do it as fast right. as I'm going to do it, but right. if they can do it in two minutes, that means that one athlete's sitting there for maybe five. It just helps speed up the process. That would be, a, that, that's a lot of pressure, Megan. It is. <laughs> it's very difficult. If the season resumes when hopefully it will, they're going to have a short period of time to get things ready and get going. So they still need to stay in shape. Right, because that could lead to injuries in itself yep. because uh, the lazy athlete's just going to lay around. They're not. They're going to eat their bag of chips, watch TV, play video games, and lose all their conditioning and strength, come back and jump mm -hmm. right into a sport. And yeah, they'll probably pull a hamstring or strain their back or something. So, yeah, yeah, on their own, they should be doing a little bit. They don't have to 
kill themselves. So right. If they're hurt, they should be doing their rehab and working on getting better so they yeah. feel 100 percent when the sport starts back. Well, up. and even even the best athletes too. Uh, if you go into it, and, and uh, the the exceptional athletes will know to keep doing something. Hopefully, but you know, good athletes still need to keep conditioned and keep ready to go when the sports do continue. Yeah, and the, one of the funny things is when you're around the kids a lot, you know, they all hate practice. <clears throat> they think it's, oh, it's practice again, and they don't put the effort into it. And when they graduate, and I see them in their assistant coaches now, mm -hmm. I said, do you think practice is important now? And they said, yeah. yeah. And they'll say, I'll ask them, do you think you should have maybe worked harder in practice? Yeah, I probably should have tried more, or right. worked harder on this or that. So, yeah, they understand later. They don't always get it now, but it's important to do their workouts and go through their practices. So will you guys prepare for anything different when things resume, or is it just kind of sit and wait for people to come see you? Yeah, I think we're, you know, well, we've never done any of this before. Right. We've had any big long breaks except for summer, so we'll have to see what happens once things resume and, and what kind of schedules everyone's going to have. and. Yeah. You know, it, I don't know. It's an interesting thing right now. It, it will be. And, and, again, one of the things that, that we've kind of talked about is is how how loaded will the schedules be with games, trying to squeeze as many in as you can before the end of the season. And, and again, if things resume at first part of April, there could be a lot of ball games between, you know, first part of April and the end of, end of May. Yes, or worst case scenario, it rains every day, mm -hmm. and you have to postpone and reschedule stuff, and it's going to be a nightmare right. to get officials and for our athletic directors to try and, and fix everything back up. Right. Yeah, it's it's going to be a challenge indeed. Dave, we appreciate you being on this morning. I appreciate you having me. All right. Again, I want to say thanks to KDH athletic trainers Dave Pappenheim, Shay Green, also student athletic trainers Abby, Ashland, and Megan for stopping in this morning as well. For Jordan Barron Studio, I'm Tim Torrance, live from McDonald's here on Works 96.7. The flaky filet of fish from McDonald's. Get two of them now for just five bucks and add a refreshing Sprite for a dollar more. Catch this deal before it's gone.